Hello and welcome to another hiking adventure. I've just arrived at Chihayaguchi. Um, this train is going off into the tunnels here. It's like all these little villages along here are between mountains. So the train just goes in and out of tunnels. Um, this is actually just one stop up from where we've been before, Amami, and two stops up from when we did the rainy hike from um, Kimitoge, that was a couple weeks ago. So this is my first time actually at Chihayaguchi. I'm going to go up, supposedly up on the mountain here there is an old castle ruin. So I'm going to go see if I can find that. And uh, let's see what we find along the way. This is the first time I say out of here. Chihaya actually means um, Chihayaguchi. So Chihaya, it's kind of, the reading would be Chi is 1000, um, Haya is quick. <laughs> and then Gucci is the, the, the mouth, um, the mouth or the entry. And this is just the entry to the Chihaya area. Uh, Chihaya goes up into the mountains here. My friend and I have gone fishing here before on the Chihaya River. And there is a little village, Chihaya Akasaka Mura, which is the smallest village in Osaka Prefecture. And it's got the longest name. It just goes on forever. So let's head on out and uh, head up into the mountains. So I'm going up out of. Um, Chihayaguchi. This is just a sleepy little town. I mean, the only thing making any sound here is the semi, the cicada, and I can hear in the distance uh, a crossing, so there's a train coming through. But that's about it. I, there are no people anywhere. <laughs> it's super quiet here. Uh, it's just got a little spin around here. You got some rice fields and stuff over here. It's just a beautiful little spot. So I'm gonna head up along here and we're gonna go up and see if we can find that castle. All right I'm gonna sign here for a little cafe and this is a, an example of the play on words sometimes we use here. So the first kanji means po which is like a step. Uh, the next one is e which is like a painting or a picture or something like that and the last one is like yume or just uh, mu can be sometimes what's used with another kanji and that means dream. So a step painting dream but then when I look down below here poem poem mu po uh, po e mu I'll never get used to going in the other direction um, and so it's poem <laughs> so it's a little play on words that in the katakana they show you that actually this poem is the name of the cafe because probably anybody trying to read the the kanji is gonna go uh, what do they mean here because they don't really go together usually so unfortunately, te QB means it is their day off. Uh, te QB means it is the usual day off. So usually, I guess today is a Tuesday. So usually on Tuesday, they would be closed. And that's uh, a lot of the shops in my Shoten Guy, my little shopping street. Same thing. Tuesday is always their te QB. Te uh, QB just means basically the the set day. So it's not a, a, a special holiday or something. It's just that they're, they're set day off. All right, I'm gonna keep on going see what else we find along the way. So I'll come to a little junction up here in the mountains and uh, what I find here is a sawmill. Uh, there's lumber all over the place here. There's some nice looking lumber. But if you see these ones right here, um, these are about a little over 90. Usually they're brought down to 90 but uh, those look like they're about 110 millimeters and those would be hashira. The hashira are the posts and the post and beam construction. So when we build a house in Japan and post and beam construction the traditional way, um, those are placed every 910 uh, millimeters apart. So we have this grid system, 910 by 1820. So the hashira are always 910 apart, then in between there's some infill and the walls are built after. So basically when you stand up a house in Japan, it's just all done with the uh, Hashira and then big hari, big beams that go over top in some places depending on what's being built up on the next floor and all that. Later on, like in, in Canadian construction, we've always built the walls with two by fours and sheath the plywood and then stand the wall. In Japanese construction, we just, uh, sorry, the truck coming, we just put up all the uh, skeleton and then you come back after the skeleton. It all goes up in basically a day if you've got a crane on hand. Uh, real quick, got a bun whole bunch of people working, and then after you come in and do all the infill, um, so building the the walls in between the hashira, that happens later. Um, the skeleton goes up in a day, <laughs> but the rest takes a long time. It actually takes longer than building a Canadian two by four house. Um, all the finishing work, I think it's a couple of months. I've never done the finishing work on one. Actually, my friends have. Um, they're, they're a family here that. 
they're all carpenters. So they've invited me to come and do this standing up a couple of times when we've put it up and that is quite the um, experience. Uh, I, hopefully I get to do it again one day, actually I should see. I'm actually going drinking with him uh, on Friday night. So who knows, maybe one of these days I'll uh, get on one of those sites again when I've got if, if matches with a day off and that uh, I'll try to shoot some video, but no promises there because I really don't know. All right, I'm gonna carry on here and head on towards that castle. Oh no, I'm, I'm stuck in this like concrete valley here. We're dropping down, dropping down and what do I see? Ah, tunnel. I hate tunnels. I mean, I love tunnels on a train, I love them on a car, but I don't like them when I'm walking. You know, it'll be like, there's not a single car coming along. I get in the tunnel and there'll be stinky exhaust cars coming through. <laughs> uh, well, here we go. Uh, it's been a while uh, and quite a few kilometers and quite a bit of climbing since that tunnel. So now I'm up here on the way towards Chihaya itself right now. Uh, the, the tunnel is way, way down there somewhere. And I found this sign, which is ooh, quite interesting. I wonder if they're open today. It says Yama no Tofu, so mountain tofu. And then over here it says Umai no Tofu, delicious tofu. And then down below it says Tofu Ryori, which is tofu cooking. So there are all kinds of tofu dishes. Uh, at the top that says very top, Teizukuri. Teizukuri, uh, handmade. And then underneath that, uh, Koksan Daizu Shio. So they're using country soy, country raised soybeans. All right, so further up, let's see if it's open or not. I'm kind of worried because every cafe I've passed so far has been closed. It's like Tuesday is their day off up here in the mountains. Uh, getting up towards the pass, I think. It looks like it anyways up ahead here. I'm not too sure, but look what I found. My truck. Like a paint. That thing would be ready to go. I love these big trucks. I love driving big trucks like this. I uh, quite often borrow one from the building supply store when I'm doing like a renovation or so to take all the materials over. I just love sitting up high, pushing my way through traffic. I drive these things like sports cars. People get out of my way. Um, so far only the one ticket. Yeah, so that's good. But yeah, I, I could just imagine having this. I mean, it's a, it's a dump in the back too. It's a dump truck. But all these other things, I'd like to modify that. I wonder if it runs. It's an old Nissan diesel, 24 valve. What a beauty. Yeah. I would love that truck. Just don't think it probably runs very well. Anyways, uh, gonna go head on up. It is getting hot. I mean, it's only, actually it's only in the mid there. No, it's even the low. Low 30s up here in the mountains, um, but that sun really packs a wallop. I can really feel that. It's just sizzling. And one thing, nice thing is it's, it does seem like it's just a wee bit less humid up here than down below. So that's kind of a plus. All right, I'm going to carry on up the mountain. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to that castle ruins. I think we are at the pass and yet another tunnel. But this one says the Chihaya Tunnel. And I can see light at the other end and it looks like we're starting to go downhill over there. So this must be it. We must be through the pass. I think after this I have to take a, a right or something. I have to check. I got a little map I printed out because you can't always trust on getting any uh, reception for the phone up here. But I believe I just turned and then uh, we should be up ahead here. There should be a post office and all that little, uh, little tiny hamlet or collection of houses maybe whatever. All right, so let's go through this tunnel. So I believe this is Chihaya. I've just come out of the uh, woods and uh, over the mountain and boom, here, way up in the mountains, is this little, uh, kind of just about a village size. It must be real fun to get up here in winter when there's snow because this is a bit of a higher elevation up here and uh, coming up through that pass and all. But it does look an idyllic little place. I mean, look at this, there's a bunch of little old buildings here. Look at this little guy behind me here, pretty cool. And uh, you're along the river here. It is a little cooler up here. You get a bit of a breeze. Definitely beats Osaka in summer. Yeah, it'd be a nice place to have a little uh, place to kick back in summer. All right, I'm gonna pass on through here and uh, keep going. Uh, how cool is this? I mean, can you imagine having your house hanging over the river? <laughs> Fish from your bedroom window. Well, I don't think there's much fish in here because this thing's flowing pretty quick and really about this much water is flowing over concrete. So I guess 
fishing's kind of out of it, but still, imagine having this going by. I remember in our house in Switzerland, my bedroom was over on the creek side, and every night there was that burbling, okay, actually this is a bit more of a rushing sound, but the burbling of the creek, I mean, going to sleep to that, that is something fantastic. I would think here, if you muffle that sound just a little bit with your walls, yeah, that'd be pretty nice, right? All right. Go further up to this little village. This is just a cool little village here. And then, what do we got here? Oh, this is the, uh, this be the fire department right here. Um, I, I doubt that the fire engine is coming out through that side. It must be over on the other side there. Um, because there's no way any cars fitting out through that. But anyways, I guess you don't need a big fire department for a small town like this. Nothing tall here, so a small fire engine will do it. And I love this. Um, ran into one of these over in Yamada Cho too. And this is the uh, Chihaya Kantan Yubin Kyogur. Uh, simple. In English, on the map, it says simple post office, which just makes me think wait, really? I mean, is this like for simple people or what? But what it is is actually it's just that it's only for basic simple needs. I mean, it doesn't do what the bigger post offices do. But uh, <laughs> kind of a fun name. Chihaya Simple Post Office. I just come up a brutally steep set of stairs. <laughs> and uh, now we are on the path to the castle. There was a sign below saying, oh, the castle ruins, that is up this way. Uh, this is also a little Shinto Tori. So I didn't actually check the rest of the sign and see maybe there's a shrine along the way, I don't know. Should be if there's a Tori here. There must be something or there was something up here. So more steps to go. Let's get up there, because lunch is beckoning me. I'm getting really hungry. Still haven't got to the castle yet. <laughs> it just keeps going and going and going. But I'm beginning to get the idea that any army attacking this castle, all the defenders had to do was come out and offer them a glass of water and they would have surrendered just for the water. I mean, it's a brutal climb. And I don't know how much further it is yet. So I know by the time I get up there, offer me a glass of water, I surrender. It would seem I've arrived, and that little sign right there, a little white sign, says uh, Chihaya Jo or Chihaya Castle. This is the castle. I'm well, just a little disappointed. I mean, yeah, okay, it's a great location for it, looking down over everything, I'm sure, but there's nothing here. Now, there is a sign over here that says Chihaya Jinja, so shrine. Um, so, it kind of, I don't really see a shrine here either. I just see buildings and things, so not really shrine buildings. So I'm gonna go and uh, have a closer look and kind of hoping there's something castle-ish here, but uh, oh well, if not, it was a nice hike in the heat. Well, there must be a lot of people come up here, uh, I guess, I don't know, maybe not right now, if it's closed, or maybe when there's tourists and stuff, although I don't really think that Chihaya is on the, uh, really on the tourist maps, but this is a little uh, kisatan here, this is a little place to go and have tea and stuff, so I guess that opens up and get some refreshments when you hike up here. I don't know, it may have been in the, in the heyday, you know, a lot of this stuff was built back when we were in bubble times and all, people would be out hiking a lot and things, and you had a lot of these places open, and now they're just closed. It is look pretty pretty old. I don't know if you can see over there. There's a really old Pepsi Cola sign. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's never open. <laughs> Not too sure. Uh, looking over this way, I do see we're leading into a Jinja over here, a, a shrine. So I'm gonna go check that out, and I'll take you on in there. Now I'm sitting on a bench that's advertising something I've never seen in Japan. Look at that, Seven Up. Yep. Yeah. And it says, you know. Let's drink some. Yeah, 7-Up. But I don't know, I have never seen a bottle of 7-Up anywhere. We, we have this one uh, van that goes around. It's green with red on it. And, it, and it's, it's actually for a type, um, it's a noodle noodle van. Like, it's not the ramen itself, but the noodles they deliver to the ramen shops maybe or something like that. It's, you see them everywhere. It's got a big men uh, kanji on the side, but every time I see it, I think it's a 7-Up van. I mean, it just looks so much like the 7-Up logo and all. But here, I actually have a bench that says 7-Up. I guess maybe at one time it was really popular here in Japan. Now, this bench is pretty old, um, so I guess at one time they had it, but yeah, I never see it. Same with Pepsi, you know, over there I had that Pepsi sign. Every once in a while you will see Pepsi somewhere, you will see a Pepsi machine even sometimes, but mainly Coca-Cola uh, of, of the um, North American drinks. Coca-Cola rules it here. 
Everything else is basically uh, Japanese uh, type drinks, which are quite nice actually. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go on and check out that shrine. Yeah, look at this little building right in front of the shrine gate. Obviously this place did have its heyday once. Uh, there's uh, seats around there, but they're all kind of decrepit falling apart. There's uh, round tables and stuff. So this was probably really popular at one time. Oh, and, yeah, if we go inside here, you see up there, there's all name tags all along here. Uh, yeah, people's names, let me just see. Uh, hard to tell exactly. They're all, I think it's a group or something. The, the name, it's all starting with Kan, you see the very top kanji all across here. It's all the, uh, it's Kana, which is like gold and metal and stuff like that. Um, but they're all different names and groups. So I'm not too sure exactly what this is, but let's carry on and go into that shrine. And so what we're going to do here is go through the Tori Gate. So when you come into the shrine, of course, always through the, through the Tori Gate, it's kind of like, you know, now you're entering into the sacred world over here of the Kami. The Kami are our little gods and they're everywhere. Oh well, wait. I might have been disappointed just a little too early because the sign here says Chihaya Joato up that way, which is Chihaya Joato means the castle ruins. There is a shrine up there. So we're gonna go up the steps and hey, we might get to see a uh, castle ruins yet. Who knows? Let's go on up these steps and find out. So I'm here with one of the uh, guardians of the shrine, guardians of the way up to the castle. He doesn't say much though. Real quiet guy. I like him. Well, that's it. Um, the shrine, there's a couple little shrines just down below here. I do not see any castle here. Again, there's a sign over here saying that this is Right there, Chihaya Jo, Chihaya Castle. And, and looking at it, yeah, I can see, I mean, look, look at this drop down here. This is just a nicely built area. This probably was the castle at one time. And now it's the castle ruins, but we just don't get to see anything. It's not like that other castle I like to go to up in Takatori. Um, eh, it's a nice hike. Sorry, no castle ruins. I guess we're just out of luck on this one but we do get to see a shrine and a nice hike up along the way. So now I'm gonna have lunch. There's gotta be a spot over here I can sit down and enjoy a nice quiet lunch because there's nobody else up here. I just spotted this little sign over here which is pointing up to where that shrine is and it says, Chi Haya Jo Honmaru Atto. Hon Honmaru is like the, the keep, the main tower. So that's the ruins of it. So I guess what they've done is they've built the shrine up, it is the highest spot, so it's where you would put the Honmaru, and they built the shrine on top of it. So, <laughs> you've seen the castle. <laughs> All right, so lunchtime. Now, you might think, what's Kevin got from Kuma's Kitchen? But I don't. Um, I was busy yesterday cooking for Kuma's Kitchen over in the studio. I made a salad, actually Japanese Kuma style um, daikon and uh, cabbage coleslaw which uh, will be coming up on Monday. And so Rieko made my uh, lunch to take up here and it's made with English muffins, which I hadn't had for a long time. So that was really a nice little treat. Not sure what's inside. Mmm, oh. I asked her if she put butter and honey in and she did. How nice, wonderful. She said secret, I'm not telling you what's in your sandwiches. <laughs> All right, other oh, delicious. I'm never very hungry, um, summer hiking. More. I just want to drink a lot of water, so just a couple of these is fantastic. The in behind me here, I'm sitting in front of the shrine. You can see back there, those are um, sake casks. There's five of them, or no, six of them. Yeah. I wonder if they're full. Anybody thirsty? <laughs> you crack one open and start drinking. <clears throat> Get another one of those, never make it down the mountain. So I'm not decided where I'm going to go after this, uh, have my lunch, and then sit back, because there is Congo Mountain near here, but uh, I don't know the route to get there whether that's it or not so i'll go check that out after and see if not well it's been a good hike up to here all right lunch bunch of water and a much needed bandana change we're ready to go again now i found something over here that i don't think i've shown you before in any of my other videos but uh see this 
and it goes down the mountain. That is a little mini monorail. And uh, you see this quite often where they're doing some kind of mountain farming. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna go up ahead here. It goes down, down the mountain. So what it is, is, um, let's see if we can find the other end after this, is that there'll be a little, like a little cart you know, a little mini train basically that goes up here and one person can ride it. It's got a little little uh, Briggs and Stratton type engine on it. And if you look underneath the monorail, you can see the teeth, teeth underneath here. See, all along here. So it grips along, there's a little wheel, it grips along a little gear wheel. And that's how they get up and down. So I've um, seen it in quite a few places where they're doing, like say, doing some kind of farming. They can go up. Uh, and collect everything and bring back down the mountain because everything here is steep. I mean, just look at this. There is not too many gentle slopes in Japan. <laughs> All of it is just like whew, straight down, straight up. All right, so I, I'm going to go down and see if I can find the other end of that. And I guess I won't be finding the other end of that because now it's diving straight down the mountain and away from where I want to go. So unfortunately, Nah, I'll find one of those again once I'm out hiking and show you because uh, sometimes you see them out there, the little, uh, the little cart and all. It looks like they have been hauling something up here because I find right here is some uh, old crates. There's two of them stacked here. Just die big on the end, whether that's uh, big size uh, something going up in there or the person who owns the box's name starts with O. Oh, um, which are quite a few people with names starting with that kanji. All right, so I'm gonna carry on and go back down the mountain and let's see what else we can find today. I've dropped down into the forest below one of the tea houses up at uh, the old castle ruins. And, and this is kind of like, like archeology span down here because there's all the stuff they've thrown out over the years from the tea house. Um, there's like a, I don't know if you see here, like an old ice cream refrigerator just lying here but also all this old pottery and things and uh you see down here so what we've got here is a, is a bunch of different cups and things like that beautiful blue but look it's got to be older stuff because this these little bottles here i found two of them and they say servet maeda uh, i've never heard of it so i'm gonna have a look online see how i figure out what uh what that is Here's an old uh, canning jar or something. It's called sanitary jar, and it's made by Toyo Seikan KK. KK is a Kabushiki Gaisha, which means uh, it's a uh, like a corporation. Uh, old teacups, and this thing here. This looks to me like it's probably from that kind of like the um, the bubble era heyday type thing, where a lot of stuff was more European looking. They're probably serving tea in it up there, and that up in the tea house. Uh, I've got another bottle here. I'm not too sure what it is, but oh wait, it's got some writing on there. Uh, Nika. Oh, okay, so this would be an old Nika whiskey bottle. Nika is one of the whiskey companies here in Japan. So it's it's kind of fun looking through this stuff down here because it is like a, it's like you've gone back to what it was like here, uh, probably be, a little bit before I got here type thing. You know, back in the uh, in the early 90s and stuff like that, even the late 80s, um, all through the 80s because of bubble time. I found some Fanta cans up there, like from Fanta drinks and stuff like that. So like, we saw that 7-Up bench before. So that kind of stuff was more popular here back then because there was kind of a boom there of really wanting um, North American drinks and jeans. I remember when I first came here, we looked at some jeans in a, in a store um, in Namba and we <laughs> I was absolutely shocked because like, they were paying a couple of hundred dollars for a pair of jeans uh, type thing. Um, you know, American dollars that would be, I guess. And yeah, I was just like, wow. Now, you know, now it's not that much. You can get jeans everywhere. But back then it was like everybody, the younger generation especially, really wanted to get into American stuff. And so that's why Fanta, 7-Up, Pepsi-Cola, all that kind of stuff too. So this is kind of fun down here. I'm Gonna look around a bit more and see what other treasures I can find. All right, there is all kinds of stuff further down this hillside, and I can hear a road down there. So rather than go down the way I did, I'm gonna bushwhack down, and let's hope we find the road. <laughs> if you don't hear from me, well, <laughs> guess where I am? Somewhere in the forest. <laughs> see you later. Well, my hunch worked out. Came to a road. 
Now I just had to wonder if this is the road I want to be on. If I follow that way, I think I should be able to get to a um, cable car that goes up Mount Congo. We'll see. <laughs> Look at what I had to fight to get out of. This stuff here, man, it's just like, it, it was like little hands grabbing me, little brambles and vines and things, but finally made it out of there. Uh, now, we'll go up the road and yeah, see if we can find the ropeway or not. Let's see what happens. I suddenly feel like I'm at a fishing camp in Canada. <laughs> Woody Hart. And it's, a, it's yeah, quite a nice looking log building. Unfortunately, like all the other cafes up there, it's closed today. Well, yesterday was a holiday, so they've got 11th and 12th, they're closed. I guess they took today off too. Or maybe Tuesday is a regular day and yesterday was their holiday day. Anyways, look at that. Nabe Spa. What it means, is, it doesn't mean a spa. It's a big pot of nabe and a uh, very mountain, uh, you know, for mountaineers, like a large pot, lots of good stuff in it. Uh, but I'm not that hungry right now, so um, I'm not upset about that. <laughs> but uh, still, it would be nice to pop in for a quick coffee, wouldn't it? Oh well, keep going up the road. On the front of uh, Happy Heart, oh look at this, I, I do wish they were open. We've got a nice little uh, veranda here with tables and stuff, overlooking a stream. And actually, now that I see this, I know exactly where I am. I've been here before down below. I've not been here, but I've been down below here. Me and my friend, we came up the road a ways. This is a fishing hole. Like there's a whole bunch of little um, pools all along the creek here. And yeah, I should remember that, Chihaya. We came to Chihaya River and this is Chihaya River. And uh, you just pay a little bit and then they find it, it's stock fish. It's called mas, which is uh, like rainbow trout. There's little guys, but yeah, they're fun. You know, they have fun, you fish, fish for them. And uh, we took a bunch home, fried them up, uh, had them for dinner. Although I've caught too many and Reiko basically told me don't ever, ever bring trout again. If you're gonna go fishing, fish for salmon. <laughs> she, she prefers salmon a lot more. I found the trout was good. I make it with, uh, okay, this is a great way to make trout. Uh, is you fillet it and then you cook it up with butter and slivered almonds. Mm -mm -mm. And I throw a little salt and pepper on there. That's all you need. It's fantastic. All right, I'm gonna go further up the road. Now I'm just about hungry for some trout. <laughs> well, I got up to the ropeway, and <laughs> this is just the day for disappointments, because guess what the sign back there says? The ropeway service is suspended. Oh, is this because of coronavirus? I mean, what? Are they worried that, you know, it's, it's a train. It's, it's just like the other trains, okay? But it goes up a mountain. It has gotten ridiculous. It's really gotten ridiculous of the places that could close down because of coronavirus. So, not overly happy about that. I'm going to grab a bus back down because uh, I'm not walking the same direction as I came up. That's not fun. But at least one thing I did find over here when I got here, uh, as in everywhere, there is a vending machine because I was all out of water. So now, oh, that's going down good. Well, that's it for today's adventure. Uh, I was hoping to take you up the ropeway. Okay, ropeway. I guess I should explain that. In, in J Japan, in Japanese, we say ropeway for cable cars, for uh, cogwheel trains, funiculars, they're all ropeways. This one is, if I remember correctly, it's a funicular. Uh, either that or a cogwheel train. It's not a cable car. But every one of those is a ropeway. So um, hopefully we'll get back to this ropeway another time and uh, go up it because and it's pretty cool up on Congo I'll have to show you that one day because massive cedar trees up there I mean the biggest cedar trees I've ever seen uh, other than in the redwood forest but just beautiful up there so we will get up there some plan soon all right anyway so that's it for today's uh if you really enjoyed this if you're not yet a patron because this I'm putting this on the YouTube channel not just on patreon this time if you're not yet a patron uh, we have a lot more of these videos on the patreon feed and for like a little, as little as three dollars a month you can become a patron, which also helps support all the recipes that I create for you. And um, we have a lot of other videos in there, like this is Japan videos, uh, the, the uh, kitchen tech videos, and the focus on ingredients videos. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, come along for another hike. See ya.